All right, moving on, Max Judd, 1851 to 1906. Born Maximilian Yudkiewicz in present-day Poland, Max and his family came to the United States in 1862, living in several states before settling in St. Louis, Missouri in 1873. In his adopted hometown, he made his mark as a promoter and a player. One of the strongest American players between Paul Morphy and Harry Nelson Pillsbury, Judd's tournament successes included first place in the 1903 Western Chess Association Championship, second place in the Fourth American Chess Congress of 1876, and second place in the Seventh American Chess Congress of 1904. In the United States, Albert Hodges with five wins, two losses, and two draws in 1888. And two years later, he beat Jackson Showalter with seven wins, three losses, and no draws. By the power vested in me, I hereby induct Max Judd into the U.S. Chess Hall of Fame. And Jennifer Shahad has some comments for us. Yes, thank you, Harold. It's so exciting today to talk about Max Judd as his efforts to bring chess to St. Louis, to bring the best chess in the world to St. Louis, foreshadowed the incredible movement that we've seen here in St. Louis in the past 12 years. Judd was born Maximilian Jakowicz in Poland in 1851 and moved to the United States along with his family in 1862, ultimately settling in St. Louis, where he became not only one of the best chess players in the United States, but also a successful businessman, becoming one of the largest cloak manufacturers and amassing a fortune. He gave back to chess by taking on the role of the president of the St. Louis Chess Club and president of the Missouri Chess Association. He memorably supported various chess projects like the Seventh American Chess Congress in St. Louis in 1904, which coincided with the World's Fair. Judd was not only the president, but also the best player of the club at the time. In 1888, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch wrote of Judd, he bears none of the marks of the chess player, but is a good looking, rather, <laughs> sorry guys, <laughs> rather jolly young man who bears his honor easily. The St. Louis Chess Club hosted a Challenge Cup, which is a precursor to what we now call the ladder system. Anyone could challenge the owner of the cup at any time, but he had to pay $2 for the right. Keep in mind, that's like $50 today. And Judd usually held on to the cup at one point for 23 months in a row. Currently in uh, modern day St. Louis, no one's holding on to any kind of cup for 23 months in a row. <laughs> Judd also helped make um, St. Louis an epicenter for high level match play. He, he played a U.S. championship title match versus Jackson Showalter, who was a five time U.S. champion. Although Judd lost that match, he went on to beat Jackson a few years later, though that one wasn't for the title. Bad timing. In 1893, Judd was asked to be the chief counsel to Austria by President Grover Cleveland. There were some anti-Semitic concerns related to him accepting this position. To give you a sense of the anti-Semitism he faced, the New York Times wrote, it is true that he is a Jew, but as he would not in any case be expected to attend court balls or state dinners or to hold any personal or social relations with the emperor or the court, that did not seem to be a relevant consideration. <laughs> Judd gracefully fulfilled the position for four years without incident and returned to his beloved St. Louis after a four year stint. Historian John Hilbert told me that, that Judd was a chess booster wherever he lived, but particularly during his decades in St. Louis, the city he wished to turn in to the nation's chess center. I can only imagine how thrilled Judd must be to see St. Louis now. Your spirit lives on. Well,